uh, apply everywhere. Uh, keep in mind those principles. You are dealing with any disease. Okay. Keep in mind that disease uh, is spreads uh, through uh, these uh, three links: the agent, the host, and the environment. Okay. When agent will be there and a susceptible host will be there and environment will favor the transmission of uh, agent from a source or reservoir to the susceptible uh, individual then the disease will spread and if you will break this uh, chain anywhere you uh, eliminate uh, the agents from the world you make all the people's uh, resistant uh, uh, to that organism as we did for the eradication of the smallpox as we are doing uh, trying to eradicate the uh, polio so uh, you can uh, eradicate or eliminate any disease or you create an envi environment like that these agents are there susceptible hosts are there even but this agent cannot be transmitted from, uh, from reservoir or the source to the uh, susceptible host for example the malaria and the diseases uh, that are being uh, is spread or transmitted through these vectors like mosquito and the flies. Uh, these uh, vectors has been eliminated from the advanced uh, countries. So the link uh, which is transmitting the malarial parasite or the dengue virus from one infected person to another uh, susceptible person, that link, that vector is not there. So these are the general principles. Now look at uh, the different uh, hemorrhagic fevers uh, yeah. viral hemorrhagic fevers uh, are a group of the clinical syndromes in which hemorrhagic manifestation is common or especially notable in severe illnesses so there are many uh, different types of the viral hemorrhagic fevers caused by the different types of the virus and different uh, 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 is, is species, different families, but the common features among all them is that the this hemorrhagic manifestation of them. Okay, etiological agents and clinical features differ slightly, but disseminated intravascular coagulopathy (DIC). This is the common pathogenic figure uh, feature. Now, see. There are different types of uh, the uh, viral hemorrhagic fevers that are uh, very common and important. There are many types, but the six or seven types are more common and more important uh, in the different countries of the world. Amongst uh, those which are most common and most dangerous for our, we will discuss them in detail. But to have an intro of uh, these diseases, most of uh, these uh, hemorrhagic fevers are mainly caused by the arthroborn, arthropod bone viruses. They are called the Arboviruses, arthropod bone viruses. Four from the family of uh, Flaviridae that are uh, the yellow fever, Cassanar forest disease, dengue, and the uh, OMSK hemorrhagic fever. Three from the family of the Buniaviridae, and they include the Congo uh, hemorrhagic fever, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, CCHV, Hanton and the Rift Valley fever. So, they occur uh, with some exceptions. All the viruses, uh, they cause the hemorrhagic fevers and they are transmitted to human via the non-human entity. Uh, some are uh, from uh, the uh, mosquitoes, through the mosquitoes, some uh, reservoirs are there in the uh, animals like the sheep and the cows and the buffaloes, uh, uh, ostrich, uh, some in the rodents, uh, some in the ticks, etc, uh, etc. Et so, they are most of the time, all of them, uh, they are being transmitted to human from the non-human entity. But once they are being uh, transmitted into human, they can be propagated or spread from human to human uh, source. A specific ecosystem is required uh, for survival. And this determines the geographic distribution of different types of these hemorrhagic uh, viral diseases. Uh, hemorrhagic fever diseases uh, that uh, eco whether the ecosystem of a specific area favors the uh, occurrence of this that virus or the occurrence of the animals that are reservoirs of that virus or not for example say again uh, i will quote uh, that dengue fever and the malarial fevers are not very common or very less uh, prevalent in the uh, western countries because they had controlled the population of mosquito and the flies. Okay. There is a thing uh, when you will uh, study the epidemiology, 
uh, you you will uh, study a uh, thing that is the mosquito density index mosquito density index tells you that how many mosquitoes are present there in 1 km area in comparison to human beings that how many mosquitoes are living in 1 km area and how many humans are living and this mosquito uh, density index is very high in our countries and in the developing countries while this is uh, almost negligible in the advanced countries and that's why this ecosystem uh, which is uh, not favorable uh, for the uh, breeding or for the propagations of the populations uh, of mosquito so these diseases do not occur there while other diseases uh, which are being transmitted from the mammals uh, they occur there uh, for example the uh, cranial congo hemorrhagic fever that is being caused by uh, the tick which lives on the skin of uh, the mammals cattle or the sheep etc so this ecosystem is uh, very important uh, for to see the geographical distribution of different types of the uh, viral hemorrhagic fever in different uh, areas of the world some may be contracted by the environmental contamination caused by animals or animal cells or from the infected humans so human to human transmission first uh, the zoonotic transmission zoonotic diseases are those diseases which occur in uh, animals uh, but that can be transmitted uh, to Uh, the human being as well. So, uh, from uh, animals to humans and human to human, both uh, um, types of the uh, transmissions are present there. Some laboratory and the hospital infections have also been uh, reported uh, in different areas. Uh, this is very common. Uh, Cranial Congo hemorrhagic fever. If you are reading it, so you will see that this has been uh, transmitted through the blood and excreta uh, of the. Uh, infected persons that infected person may be animal or uh, may be the human being so it has been many surgeons has been contaminated uh, during surgeries in you know, their uh, gloves were tear and uh, they were having some uh, scratches or abrasions in their hand and through those abrasions uh, the blood particles uh, of the infected uh, patient who was being uh, getting operated there they passed into the body of the surgeons or paramedics and they got infected and Uh, suffered very severely or even uh, died of that infections a um, very common presentation uh, in different countries what they cause the viral hemorrhagic fever they they are multi system uh, uh, syndromes okay and uh, they damage uh, overall vascular uh, systems and this damage of the vascular system causes the uh, intravascular bleeding there and this is because of this uh, bleeding uh, uh, that most of the symptoms arise other than uh, the common uh, general symptoms these symptoms uh, you know, fever like malaise like uh, pain like fatigue these are being associated by the symptoms of hemorrhage like the conjunctivitis petechiae ecchymosis etc etc so uh, we will see it uh, when we will come to the important uh, diseases that are prevalent in our area and uh, what are the symptoms there and why they, those symptoms are there mostly uh, these uh, four uh, families of viruses they are responsible for most of the uh, viral hemorrhagic fevers and they are the arena and the filo and flavi so arena filo bunia and flavi if you want to remember uh, these uh, the names of these families you may remember very easily a f b f a for arena f then f for filo b for bunia f for flavi arena filo bunia and flavi viruses these are the four families uh, among which most of the viruses uh, are there in these families which are causing these viral hemorrhagic fevers all of them nearly all of them are the rna viruses that are being enveloped in a lipid coating and uh, you see this lipid coating is uh, present there on uh, the virus of uh, you see uh, the most prevalent disease nowadays uh, <coughs> which we are facing covid-19 then this uh, lipid coating is uh, of uh, these viruses is being damaged uh, by the soap because their surface tension is being uh, reduced
lipid coating. This lipid coating is present here as well, uh, and these are antiviruses uh, of uh, the uh, viral hemorrhagic fever. Survival is dependent on uh, animal or the insect host, host uh, for uh, uh, natural uh, reservoir. So, uh, as the natural reservoir will be there, these viruses will remain there and the disease will remain there. This uh, picture shown here is the picture of uh, Ebola uh, virus. When you will uh, uh, see uh, this presentation uh, from uh, your uh, uh, presentation banks, from where you download all the presentation of different teachers, then you will see that in the note sheet uh, below the transparency, I have written down most of the things. Uh, so you, for the revision purposes, you may study those uh, note sheets. These are the uh, four families, the Arena, the uh, Philo, the Bunia, and the Flavi, Varidae. And uh, amongst these, uh, Arena has the uh, five. Yeah, these are the common, Geonin, Macupo, Sebia, Gonatio, and Lhasa. And the Bunia Viridae, uh, this is the important one, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, which uh, are important for us. Then the hard time, the Rift Valley fever that is being present in different parts of the world. Ebola has been reported in, uh, in Pakistan. Marker is less common, has not been reported yet as far as uh, uh, my knowledge is concerned. And uh, then there are the Cassinor Forest disease, OMSK hemorrhagic fever, yellow fever, and the dengue fever. So most commonly, uh, we are uh, dealing with the, the dengue yellow fever and the CCHF. We will uh, discuss these diseases in detail. These are some of the viruses which causes hemorrhagic uh, uh, fever. But there are many other viruses in these families which I have not uh, enlisted because they do not cause the hemorrhagic fever. They may cause uh, some other diseases. So uh, remember these uh, four families, the arena, uh, the dunia, the uh, Fido and the Philadelphia. Okay, then see uh, the dengue hemorrhagic fever, uh, which is the uh, very common uh, fever uh, in our societies, and uh, it has caused the epidemic in Pakistan, um, in uh, Karachi, and in uh, the areas of the Punjab, where thousands of the cases and thousands of the deaths you know, has been reported uh, through uh, these uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever. Uh, a few hours, a uh, few years uh, back in 2015, 16, and uh, uh, in uh, the previous years. And uh, this is the disease which is uh, being uh, called the dengue fever or the dengue hemorrhagic fever, according to the uh, presentation. If only the fever and uh, non hemorrhagic uh, symptoms are there, this is being called the dengue fever. But uh, if the hemorrhagic sign and symptoms are there, this is being called the dengue hemorrhagic fever. These are the acute febrile illnesses, and they are being transmitted by mosquitoes, okay? Which mosquito? Uh, the mosquito Aedes aegypti and the Aedes albopictus. These two spe species of the mosquito are uh, there, which transmits Aedes aegypti, also transmits uh, the malaria, and uh, the malaria is uh, being transmitted nearly by all the species of the Anopheles mosquito. But all the species of Anopheles mosquito do not transmit uh, the uh, dengue. This is only the Aedes aegypti and the Albopictus mosquito. Mostly uh, this uh, disease occurs in the tropical regions and this is because uh, uh, number one, the more, more rains there and number two, uh, the more, more breeding uh, places there or uh, again I will refer the more population of the mosquito. So the mosquito density index is more in these countries and they are unable to control the population of the mosquito. These are the life threatening infections. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I should not say most of the time, but many times uh, uh, they uh, become life threatening. This is also known as the bone breaking fever. Bone breaking fever, this is the most classical sign. Uh, when the patient will present to you, uh, he will uh, give you the complaints of high grade fever and uh, severe pain in the bones. Okay, that is why this is being called the bone breaking fever. And when you will come across these signs and symptoms, then first think about that this may be a dengue fever. And uh, sometimes uh, it occurs that when the mosquito bites, it uh, transmits both the organisms, the malaria and the uh, dengue virus. So they may uh, present to you with a double infection. So you have to be careful that while treating uh, dengue virus, whether a malaria is associated along with and you have to do uh, the ICT malaria, the uh, for uh, malarial parasite slides, making them confirming that malaria is 
associated or not, or this is only the uh, dengue fever. This is being transmitted to human by the bites of the Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus mosquito. And these mosquitoes, most of the time, they are called the office mosquitoes. Most of the time, they uh, bite at the dusk and the dawn. Subha jab suraj nikalne ka time hai ya guru bhone ka time hai. These uh, climate favors them. But in the offices uh, and in the houses, they remain all the time and they may uh, bite any time in the uh, day. Most of the time uh, when you sit uh, and uh, in the lower sides of the, your tables and the desk, these mosquitoes are present there. So you have to be very uh, careful that you should uh, wear uh, the long uh, uh, socks. So they should not bite. They most of the time bites on the uh, uh, lower legs. Then, see, this is uh, the Aedes aegypti. This is also called uh, the tiger mosquito because of these uh, white and the black uh, marks on its body, and it, it looks like a, a tiger. It's uh, there is uh, there are two things that you can identify that uh, this mosquito which you are looking at your home or at your class is Aedes aegypti or not. You look at these uh, spots, white and the black, and then look uh, for the angle of sitting of that mosquito. This, this mosquito always sits like this, the aeroplane, making a 45 degree angle from the surface of the table or the desk on which it is sitting. If it is sitting with the tail up and the body uh, head down, making a 45 degree angle from the surface on which it's sitting, and it's having uh, these uh, uh, marks, uh, the spots on uh, its body. This is it is aegypti and dangerous mosquito. Some near about uh, near about half of the population of the world, uh, or 2.5 billion to be more specific, 40 percent of the population uh, of the world. If you see, uh, they are now at risk, and it is estimated that there may be near about 50 million cases of dengue fever every year worldwide. 50 million means even 5 crore new infection har saal they are being registered uh, of uh, this this is the dengue fever okay disease is not in no endemic in more than 100 countries out of the 194 countries of the world and you know endemic means sir uh, endemic diseases are those diseases which are present in the society all the time in a good number causative organism uh, is uh, the uh, Dengue virus uh, belongs to the flavivirus genes, family is the flaviviridae, and they are the group 4 RNA. Four species, four serotypes of this dengue virus are there present uh, in different mosquitoes, and they are being called DEN1, DEN2, DEN3, and DEN4. So DEN1 to 4 to 4 species are there of the dengue virus, which uh, belongs to the family of the flaviviridae. First, uh, the disease uh, or uh, epidemic of this disease was uh, being recognized and at that time uh, we were not aware of the virus which is causing this disease, but we were aware uh, about the symptoms and the sign of this specific disease and this was uh, uh, notified in 1780. It is in Asia, Africa and North America simultaneously in, from all there, this type of the virus being uh, reported causing intense pain in the bones and high grade fever and the people uh, thought that there is something uh, you know, something common which is occurring in all these uh, uh, areas of the world uh, so all these uh, continents are being uh, um, affected uh, and the cases were being reported from these continents uh, in the same time but at that time like uh, you see uh, AIDS, AIDS and AIDS like syndromes, uh, syndromes were reported from many uh, parts of the world. But at that time, uh, uh, the virus of the AIDS, HIV, was not being uh, identified. And it was identified many years after the syndrome was identified. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, the dengue uh, fever syndrome and its epidemic were identified in 1780s, but its virus was named uh, in 1779. In that time, it was identified a few years after uh, the uh, identification of the syndrome. <coughs> in 1915, the pandemic began in Southeast Asia, and uh, from then it is uh, continuously going on. Uh, giving uh, some uh, peaks and troughs, but it is endemically present in all these areas. 
Then the hemorrhagic fever uh, became a leading cause of the death among children in this region, in our region, uh, around 1975. And <coughs> in, uh, by 1990, dengue was the most important mosquito-borne disease after malaria. I said <coughs> the second most uh, important uh, uh, mosquito-borne disease. The first was uh, the malaria. And in the previous lecture, when uh, we were discussing malaria, I told you that malaria has caused more deaths of the human beings than all the wars in the history of the universe has been fought. Uh, it is said that uh, uh, the mortalities, the deaths in the Second World War were around in between uh, 1 crore to 5 crore. 1 crore se 5 crore ke darmiyan jo deaths thi, different reports that were occurred in the Second World War only. Is ke alawa, jitni jo jangye ho chuki hain in uh, the history of the human being, uh, wo sab aap mila kar ek taraf kar le First World War or different other wars and uh, the uh, mortalities, uh, deaths caused by the malaria, wo ek taraf hai, to malaria ke deaths zada hain on tamam wars. And after malaria, the most important and most lethal uh, uh, mosquito-borne disease is the dengue fever, especially in uh, concerned with our area. Okay, dengue hemorrhagic uh, fever is uh, more likely to occur in the patients who have secondary infections by another serotype. Now, a dengue fever, a part of it, dengue hemorrhagic fever is the another thing. Dengue hemorrhagic, first, uh, jab, uh, dengue virus ko bhi, DN1 ho ya DN2 ya 3, 4, when it attacks or when it gets uh, entered in the body, then uh, what happens? Ki ye dengue fever wale sare jo hai wo, uh, sare sign symptoms aapko milte hain. Ke intense uh, malice, bone pain and high grade fever, weakness, etc, etc. Uh, lekin jab ye second koi gene attack karti hai after the first, a few months after the first, that becomes more severe and more dangerous and here most of the time the presentations are of the dengue hemorrhagic fever more likely infectivity uh, dengue fever patient is infective uh, to another patients it can transmit uh, the virus to other patients uh, from one day before the onset of the symptoms to five days thereafter so you cannot recognize when the sign symptoms has not occurred but the patient is transmitting or is spreading the disease to other persons uh, even one day before the fever and uh, the pain or other things has uh, occurred and after the symptoms five days after the symptoms uh, till after the symptoms it is spreading the disease so uh, it is being uh, recommended that uh, the patient as soon as it has been uh, diagnosed or suspected to be a patient of the dengue fever he should be isolated in the bed nets uh, where uh, he cannot have a contact with mosquito so if the mosquito bites him they take the dengue virus from uh, that patients and when this mosquito bites another uh, person it transmits that virus so he should be separated like that uh, <coughs> no uh, mosquito can be uh, can come in contact with him so and when uh, it is being uh, confirmed that he is uh, after the labs that he is having dengue fever he should complete his uh, isolation for till uh, five days after the uh, onset of the symptom and if uh, he is uh, being confirmed not having uh, the dengue fever then he may be released uh, and isolation may be broken so one day before till uh, the five days after uh, the uh, appearance of uh, symptoms there is a thing uh, which is called the incubation period incubation period refers to uh, the uh, period, the time duration from the entry of organism into the body of the human, human being up till the appearance of first sign and symptom. This is what the incubation period is. But there is one another thing which is called the extrinsic incubation period. Extrinsic incubation period refers to the incubation period in the animals, but not in the meanings of appearance of sign and symptoms. This by the means that uh, the time uh, period, time duration from the entry of organism into a vector and then up till that vector becomes infected. Okay? For example, ke ek, uh, uh, one mosquito has bitten a patient of the de dengue fever today and if he bites another person who is susceptible today, he cannot transmit that. 
that virus has to go through some life cycle in the body of uh, uh, that mosquito and when it will acquire uh, the infective form then uh, that virus will be uh, able to be transmitted by the mosquito bite to another susceptible uh, in individual this is called the extrinsic incubation period and this in extrinsic incubation period is near about 8 to 10 days after that period it transmits disease till the end of his life so mosquito when uh, it bites a person uh, who is infected with dengue fever today he will become infective or able to transmit that infection to other susceptible person eight to ten, 10 days after and then that mosquito will remain infective till his life till the end of his state's life and it is being reported that the uh, vertical transmission among the mosquitoes is present there that means uh, if a female mosquito is infected with the uh, dengue, fever, dengue fever virus uh, uh, then when it lays eggs that eggs are already infected with that, that dengue virus and uh, when they grow up and becomes adult they without biting any infected human being they can transmit they are by birth having that infective uh, that uh, uh, dengue fever virus uh, but the studies uh, are different in this mode that vertical transmission is present for dengue fever or not most of the studies are there in favor of it clinical symptoms uh, initial symptoms uh, are the high grade fevers okay and the fatigue and dizziness and severe muscle aches severe pain in the muscles and in the bones and then exhaustion this exhaustion uh, that tells you about the uh, and the IC in, intravascular uh, coagulations uh, if you are not having the uh, bleeding in different parts of the uh, body. So uh, be careful uh, of the uh, presentation of exhaustion in the patients uh, along with the uh, acute and severe pains along with high grade fever. So this is uh, these uh, are uh, the uh, <coughs> in Nigeria. And a health worker is nursing to a patient of uh, Ebola and now you see this is called the barrier nursing that he is having shield is not present there that should also be present and all the protective clothings are here so uh, barrier nursing you will come across uh, when you will study the uh, prevention of uh, mm, uh, the disease because uh, there is no uh, specific treatment of uh, these diseases the viral hemorrhagic fevers are there so uh, clinical symptoms, uh, initial uh, symptoms uh, you saw, then more in more severe cases, in the hemorrhagic cases, there are the bleeding under the skins and the petechiae, echimosis, conjunctivitis, bleeding in the internal organs, bleeding from different orifices, uh, maybe there may be the hemoptysis, there may be the hematemesis, there may be the melina, there may be the epistaxis. Uh, so, Blood loss uh, rarely causes the death. So this is the cause of the death when if the death occurs, however, the mortality has declined with a better nursing and better supporting treatment, supporting treatment nowadays, not the cause, especially uh, the bleeding in the uh, uh, cerebral areas or uh, in the cardiac uh, cerebral uh, cardiovascular systems. These are the cause of the deaths in these cases. Diagnosis of uh, dengue uh, hemorrhagic fever is uh, very easy. The history itself tells you the diagnosis. Uh, the patients comes to you even is qadar shadid dard hota hai ki jawan log jo hai wo is tarah se clinic mein aapke daakhil honge ki unhe do bandon ne pakda hua hoga side se they were not able to walk even itne shadid wo jo hai pain ke sath jo hai aapko present honge and then along with that uh, high grade fever and then you uh, know uh, the area from where they are living uh, all the area of the Pakistan they are uh, uh, prevalent with the population of the mosquitoes so you know, the history is their presentation is there then if you will uh, want to confirm it uh, then you will see uh, the blood CT and um, all the uh, levels of all the leukocytes uh, will be less there but more markedly the platelets uh, count is very less and thrombocytopenia is the most and this is the cause of the bleeding as well so uh, if you are looking uh, the thrombocytes and the platelets are less than uh, near about 100000 or uh, 80000 or 40000 is tarah maine jo ab tak zyada se kam platelet ka patient dekha hai 2000 ke platelet ke patient dekha hai aur he was just came walking in my clinic 
और जब मैंने उस दिन सी पी सी लिख के दिया नेक्स्ट डे मैंने किया मैं तो टू थाउजेंड तो देन आई रेफर बैक क्विकली मैं टू द हॉस्पिटल फॉर समाइड ट्रांसफ्यूजन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दैट पेशेंट सर्वाइव दैन वेल वेरी वेल नाउ सो देन इफ यू विल डू द डेंगी एंटीबॉडीज आई जी एम एंड आई जी जी आई जी एम यूजली कम्स पॉजिटिव फोर टू फाइव डेज आफ्टर आई जी जी इज लेटर डाउन so uh, these uh, are the latter diagnosis when antibodies are there and patient has survived the quick uh, diagnosis on the same day is the pcr polymerase chain reaction for uh, a dengue uh, virus so you can confirm to, through pcr you can suspect through history and cc uh, cbc and the diagnosis is easy what about treatment you have diagnosed there is no any specific treatment present for uh, these uh, dengue hemorrhagic or dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever only the supporting treatment are there uh, dealing with the uh, panadol uh, for um, uh, as antipyretic and the painkiller and the, the most important thing is a lot of the fluids okay uh, so you have to uh, maintain uh, the uh, hydro balance and lot of juices uh, to, uh, this uh, electrolyte balance you have to be very careful about that so the patient should not go in uh, shock antiviral drugs uh, are not recommended in uh, the treatment of uh, this uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever they have some role in the treatment of the crimean uh, congo crimean hemorrhagic fever but here there is no role of the any antiviral drug ritovirin or any other then uh, a strict isolation of the affected patient is uh, required so he should not spread um, the disease to another uh, mosquitoes and through another mosquitoes to another human being this disease cannot be directly transmitted from uh, uh, human being to human being it needs a, a vector channel in between the two humans uh, it cannot be transmitted through the excreta of uh, the uh, affected person or through blood of the affected person so that means if uh, the blood of the affected person can uh, pass my skin through some abrasion it will not affect uh, mm, there it cannot uh, be uh, transmitted through air bone or water bone or uh, food bone uh, channels then uh, reporting to the health authorities because this is a notifiable disease is must all the things all the emphasis uh, should be there on the control measures uh, and the control measures are the mosquito control okay and this is uh, the answer of uh, this question which uh, has been uh, sent to me why we are not able to eliminate we are not able to eliminate because of uh, uh, two reasons uh, number one reason is that there is no vaccine okay so nobody is uh, resistant uh, against uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever everybody is susceptible even he has suffered through dengue fever once he may be affected uh, next time as well because the immunity that is being produced as a result of uh, uh, the infection natural infection of the dengue fever is not uh, long lasting this is a uh, short term um, immunity so we are not resistant through any means okay and secondly reservoirs are present there there are many persons thousands of the persons and millions of the persons and uh, the mosquitoes uh, uh, are there which are present in the society and they are harboring the dengue virus within their body and the thirdly that uh, the mosquitoes population is not being controlled in our uh, uh, areas in our countries and this is the reason uh, why we cannot uh, eliminate uh, the malaria why we cannot eliminate the mosquitoes uh, eliminate the dengue fever and why we are uh, not able to eliminate other diseases which are being transmitted uh, through these mosquito so if uh, the weakest chain we can, no vaccine has been uh, manufactured you cannot uh, eliminate all the human beings who are bring uh, the viruses in their body so the weakest weakest link in uh, the chain of transmission of this disease is the mosquito so if you control uh, the population of the mosquito number 1 and number 2 if you control the contact of mosquito with the human beings using the bed nets uh, using the protective clothing using the repellents so you can control the transmission of this infection so vectors of uh, these that is the mosquito breed in and around houses and in principle can be controlled by individuals and community action it is uh, to be said जहाँ पर भी थोड़ा सा पानी अगर जमा है फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू सी आपके घरों में गमले होते हैं और गमलों के नीचे एक प्लेट सी होती है ताकि जो पानी आप डालें वो नीचे से निकल के प्लेट में आ जाए 
और पूरे फर्श को जो है वो गंदा ना करे उस एक प्लेट के अंदर जो है थोड़ा सा पानी अगर जमा है तो मिलियंस ऑफ द मॉस्किटोज कैन ब्रीड इन दैट ओके आपने जो है वो बाथरूम में बाल्टी में थोड़ा सा पानी छोड़ दिया है मिल दैट इज सफिशियंट टू ब्रीड मिलियंस ऑफ द मॉस्किटो और ये साफ पानी में ब्रीड करता है ये भी खास बात है ठीक है ना सो दीज ब्रीडिंग प्लेसेज शुड बी एलिमिनेटेड एंड वी ट्राई टू कंट्रोल द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दिस मॉस्किटो दिस इज द वे एंड वी ट्राई टू कंट्रोल द कॉन्टेक्ट ऑफ दिस मॉस्किटो टू द्यूमन बींग्स दिस इज द ओनली वे दैट वी कैन प्रिवेंट द ट्रांसमिशन एंड वी कैन गेट रेट और मिनिमाइज the rate of the infections <coughs> isolating at the bed nets during the first few days i said uh, for at least 5 days after the appearance of the symptoms individual protections against the, the mosquito no vaccine so far has been developed uh, for these uh, <coughs> but the work is going on on many different types of the vaccine uh, hopefully uh, we will see uh, in the next few or some years some vaccines uh, that uh, are being uh, effective against uh, these uh, uh, viruses the problem is same as uh, that of along with the malaria that malaria is being caused by the four uh, species uh, they are being the falciparum vivax ovale and the malaria similarly there are four species of the dengue virus dn1 2 and 3 and 4 so if one vaccine is effective again uh, dn1 it is not very effective against uh, other three types this is the problems uh, that uh, the immunologists are facing on and they are trying to make a vaccine which is effective against uh, e- e- minimally minimally more than one type so uh, that uh, vaccine may be given in different areas where d and one is more common or two is more common and accordingly for prevention uh, as i said three operation must be conducted isolation of the patients emergency mosquito control simultaneously and personal protection if we will uh, work on these three corners uh, the spread of the disease uh, may be minimized very much and uh, we may control uh, the disease so next is the uh, crimean uh, congo hemorrhagic fever this is zoonotic viral disease do not you know those diseases which are being transmitted from the animals to the human beings uh, like the dengue fever and uh, others uh, it is present in many species of different animals and the mammals especially and uh, most of the time different animals uh, they live uh, asymptomatic and nobody knows uh, that uh, they are having infection within them or the virus within them this is a serious threat to the human being causative virus is often transmitted by the ticks that are present on the body of the uh, human being that takes uh, bites uh, that mammal sucks the blood and the virus from the mammal and when this tick bites uh, to the human being uh that uh, virus is being transmitted or if the human being rubs uh, that uh, takes in his hands bare handed and he is having some uh, abrasion in his hands so that uh, material that may be transmitted cross uh, the uh, skin uh, barrier goes into the blood and cause the infection to the human being so once uh, the animal to human uh, transmission has occurred then human to human transmission Uh, can also occur so if the blood of a human who is infected with this cchf is being uh, is uh, uh, goes within the body of another person who is uh, susceptible it may cause the cchf this is in is particular threat to the farmers or who are the uh, animal handlers so uh, it is a threat to all them veterinarians laboratory workers uh, hospital personnel who are coming in contact with the patients of the cchf and uh, having in contact with the excretors and the blood especially the blood products of the uh, these patients so this is the root of transmission it has uh, occurred widely uh, in uh, near about uh, all of the world and the disease occurs in mostly in africa in asia and middle east these are the more endemic regions for these diseases also found in the ports of the europe former ussr turkey great kosovo albania etc so near about all the world is being infected by this uh, um, this uh, virus it is caused by the crimean congo hemorrhagic virus cchv and this belongs to the family of the bunia viridae and the genes is the narvas okay <clears throat> transmission as you know usually circulates between asymptomatic animals and the ticks in in zootic cycle in zootic or amongst the animals amongst the uh, not in the human being so it circulates all the time in uh, between the different animals uh, due to the bites of the ticks from one animal to other animals 
but uh, it may be transmitted to human being incidentally and then it continues on uh, from human to human and spreads. Virus, uh, there are near about 31 species of the ticks uh, that can uh, transmit this uh, virus, uh, uh, including seven genera of the exodidate core tick. Most common is the hyaloma uh, gene, which is mostly uh, involved in the transmission. This is a tick of the gene of the tick. Many species of the man man mammals can transmit uh, this uh, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever uh, to the ticks when they are viral. Okay, if, the, if, if this is uh, other way around, the, the, the ticks uh, are transmitted to the human beings, but the, from the human beings, ticks may also take up uh, if the virus and the human being is uh, viral. Human infection principally from the contact with livestock, cattle, sheep, goats, ostrich, so animal handlers, uh, handlers, patient handlers, and the uh, lab uh, workers. Virus or the antibodies uh, detected in the rodents as well, horses as well, and some birds as well. So these are all uh, the uh, animals which are being infected through these uh, viruses. Okay. Human uh, becomes infected through the skin and uh, by ingestion by the two routes, uh, skin abrasions and ingestion. Aerosol transmission uh, was suspected in few cases in Russia, uh, was suspected but that was not uh, approved. Sources of uh, exposure they include being bitten by a tick, crushing an infected tick with, uh, with a bare hand, contacting animal blood or tissue, drinking unpasteurized milk, Human-to-human -human transmission occurs particularly when the mucous membranes are exposed to blood during hemorrhage or during surgery. This virus is stable for up to 10 days in the blood, kept at 40 degrees centigrade. Okay, or even if there is more temperature, it is stable, but if there is more temperature, it is not stable. Okay, this uh, virus can be inactivated by the disinfection is infections including 1% hypochloride, 2% glutaraldehyde, and it is also destroyed by heating at 56 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Now see, we have unpasteurized milk anyone is drinking, he is able to get the virus because uh, the mammal or the cow or the buffalo was suffering through or, or was harboring this virus. So most of the time we people uh, drink unpasteurized uh, milk. Okay, but we heat or boil this uh, uh, milk at more than 50 to 60 degrees centigrade, but we do not boil uh, for 30 minutes. Okay, but we boil for 4 minutes or 5 minutes, our temperature is near about 100 degrees centigrade. So, as the temperature increases, uh, as the temperature increases, the time duration decreases. Okay. <clears throat> CCHG is present in the blood, body fluids, and the tissues of the affected patients, and that can be transmitted through the body fluids uh, as well. Hemorrhages are an important source of exposure for other people, particularly family members and the healthcare workers. So, uh, this uh, answers the questions uh, from some students uh, that whether it can be transmitted for the body fluids or not. In incubation period is influenced by the route of exposure whether it is uh, being uh, transmitted directly by the bite of the uh, tick or uh, it has been uh, due to the exposure to the blood of the tissues. Uh, so if it is being uh, transmitted by the, by the tick bite, uh, the incubation period is less, uh, usually uh, uh, one to three days, as long as it may be nine days. But if it is being transmitted through the blood of the tissues, it is uh, near about uh, five to six days in average, as long as it may go as 13 days. These are the ticks uh, and uh, this is given the life cycle of uh, these uh, uh, viruses in the mammals, in the human beings and in the ticks. Uh, so you can see the different stages of the life cycle there. There are three uh, clinical stages um, of this disease and they are the pre-hemorrhagic uh, phase, the hemorrhagic phase and the convalescent phase. So in the pre-hemorrhagic phase, when hemorrhage is not there, this is the early or the first stage of the disease. And uh, here, <clears throat> there is a sudden onset of the fever, high grade fever, along with the same uh, acute pain in the body. But the headache is the more uh, prominent sign in this type of the disease. 
then dizziness and photophobia is there neck pain myalgia is there and this neck pain confuses uh, uh, that whether this is uh, encephalitis or meningitis or not and then there are the gi symptoms like uh, nausea vomiting non bloody diarrhea sharp mood changes confusions aggressions uh, uh, are being reported and if you are facing a patient with high grade fever with all these uh, associated symptoms especially uh, your concentration should be towards photophobia aggression and confusion and myalgia so uh, think about the cchf and then ask the patient uh, whether he is a animal handler or has some contact with the animals or not then there is the second phase uh, the hemorrhagic phase and this occurs after several days and it is usually short lasting averagely 2 to 3 days long and here the signs of the hemorrhage are there which may be the petechiae which may be the bruises hematemesis melena epistaxis hemoptysis and uh, from other bleeding from other locations so some patient die from hemorrhages especially when these hemorrhages occur in the uh, brain or in the severe uh, symptoms so some die of the hemorrhagic pneumonia when these hemorrhages occurs in that is why this is more uh, fatal disease as compared to other viral hemorrhagic fevers um, uh, like dengue and others in patients who survive recovery begins 10 to 20 days after the onset of illness and uh, this recovery is called the convalescent phase this is characterized by general weakness sweating poor appetite dryness of mouth poor vision loss of hearing loss of memory loss of ears and um, uh, other uh, symptoms and this remains for uh, many uh, weeks uh, and very slowly it uh, disappears then diagnosis uh, similarly as the dengue fever it uh, can be diagnosed uh, <coughs> from uh, pcr okay and uh, the virus can be uh, isolated from the plasma and the tissues uh, it pcr is highly sensitive but uh, the antibody technique is less sensitive so this is uh, is being more preferable to do the pcr for these uh, uh, these things igm or igg has uh, been um, can be diagnosed uh, through this uh, we can diagnose it um autopsy this virus can be uh, found uh, in lung liver spleen bone marrow kidney and brain treatment uh, uh, again uh, there is no treatment uh, only the supportive treatment are available there and uh, if these supportive treatment are good the patient can uh, survive and the fatalities can be fatalities or the mortalities can be uh, minimized or decreased intensive monitoring to guide volume and blood component component replacement is required antiviral drugs like ribavirin are said to have some role in this type of the fever cchf value of immune plasma from recovered patient is still uh, questionable and not in uh, usual practice prevention same as that of uh, the uh, cchf that avoiding bites from the infected ticks and contacts with infected blood then measures to avoid tick bites include tick repellent brush removal instead of the hand removal of the animals use of insecticide regular examination of clothing and skin for ticks apne kapdon ko dekhenge us pe ticks to nahi hai unko jhadna and uh, wearing the long pants tucked into the boots and long sleeves and shirt uh, acaricides uh, can be used uh, for these uh, to uh, 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 against uh, these uh, ticks so then uh, there are different pesticides that can be used as well protective clothing and uh, gloves worn when exposed to the viremic animals unpasteurized milk should not be drunk cchsv uh, hfv is killed by cooking so there is no uh, matter uh, of the meat of uh, that animals they are being cooked on that high temperature that is they are being uh, killed a strict universal precautions necessary when caring human patients uh, that uh, uh, caring the patient you see the picture the nursing person was attending that ebola virus child then barrier nursing is that then isolating those patients use of the gloves gown face shields and goggles an inactivated mouse brain drive vaccine is being developed and used in eastern europe however no safe or effective vaccine available okay so this is the inactivated mouse brain is a uh, vaccine which is used to enable up till now so uh, next uh, only two to three slides about yellow fever yellow fever uh, against a zoonotic disease caused by the rh virus and it affects primarily uh, principally the monkeys and other vertebrates in tropical american africa 
It is transmitted uh, by the bite of the uh, Culex mosquito, Culexine mosquito, and it shares clinical features with other, other viral hemorrhagic fever same. So same are the precautions, but this yellow fever do not occur. The important thing is that this yellow fever do not occur in our country, in our areas. Why this is not occur? All the persons uh, that are living in Pakistan, they are susceptible against uh, this yellow fever. They are not being vaccinated. The yellow fever is being transmitted by the vector mosquito Culex, Anophilax Culex. So now you see the vector is there, susceptible person is there. Which link is missing in between? The link which is missing is the virus, the reservoir or the source. This is not present in uh, our country. Now suppose a patient yellow fever in South Africa is very prevalent disease. There is a person who has a body in blood mein, yellow fever ka virus hai, that comes to you, comes to your country. Or yahan ka mosquito se bite kar leta hai. Bas yahan se cycle shuru ho jayega. So what we do, that we do ki koi patient jo hai, kisi bhi dunia ke area se aisa hai jo ki yellow fever ka virus uski body mein maujood ho, wo humare mulk mein na ha pahe. Secondly, kisi mulk se koi mosquito na ha jaye, ke, uh, who is having this yellow fever within its body. For this, all the travelers, they need uh, the certificate of uh, uh, vaccination against yellow fever. And if there is no certificate that comes from the certificate, then they will have to quarantine it for the first time. And that should be quarantined uh, for the longest incubation period of the yellow fever near about the, uh, that will come. Six days. Uh, in the case of the yellow fever. So these are the two, two techniques that okay, virus where by human beings jo hai wo, uh, transmit now okay, from the areas where the yellow fever is being endemic to the areas where the yellow fever do not exist. And number the uh, uh, next thing is uh, that okay, mosquitoes na jai. So all the shipments, all the aircrafts who are coming from those areas, uh, they should be uh, decontaminated through aerosol spray. ठीक है एक जो है एक छोटा सा आ, स्प्रे होता है जिसको आ, फिरोन आ, जो है वो बम कहते हैं छोटा सा बॉल लाइक थिंग होती है उसके अंदर फिरोन गैस होती है वो एयरक्राफ्ट्स के अंदर जो है बस की जाती है और वो सारे एयरक्राफ्ट में गैस जो है वो स्प्रेड हो जाती है और इन मॉस्किटोस को वो डाई कर देती है दिस स्टेप्स शुड मस्ट बी टेकन एंड देन अगर जो है बगैर किसी प्रोटेक्शन के या बगैर किसी सर्टिफिकेट के yellow fever vaccination ke certificate se koi person a jata hai to usko quarantine karenge quarantine means ki wo person jin pe shubha hai shak hai suspected hai ki inko disease hai ya nahi hai to phir unko jo longest incubation period ke liye limit kar dete hain aur dusron se contact kam kar dete hain the difference between the quarantine and the isolation i had said previously ki quarantine mein suspected log hote hain isolated ke andar jo patient hai wo confirm hota hai uski diagnosis okay so that was all about uh, the uh, <clears throat> viral hemorrhagic fevers. Uh, I hope uh, that it uh, the message has been uh, transported very well. Uh, we are having one or two minutes left uh, for uh, this. If any question, uh, I welcome. How thrombocytopenia uh, occurs in uh, dengue fever? Uh, thrombocytopenia and uh, all other uh, uh, leukocyte counts are low there, and it is uh, uh, it causes uh, damage uh, to the platelets. That's why uh, this thrombocytopenia occurs there. <coughs> Agar am, uh, we are boiling uh, uh, milk for four to five minutes, so. Uh, Academically, also theoretically, the Crimean Congo fever is not being killed. But this depends on the boiling temperature. When we have 56 minutes, 56 degrees centigrade, if we boil 30 minutes, then this virus will kill. But if you have boiling 100 degrees centigrade, then comparatively, time will be less. But if you have to boil 30 minutes, then you will be able to do it in 10 minutes. Go five minutes, man. Lekin ye aapko you have to see in the literature. CDC, agar aap bolenge reference mein, 
अगर आप ये इस प्रेजेंटेशन को देखेंगे विदाउट स्लाइड शो तो नीचे आपको नोट्स के अंदर ये चीज नजर आ जाएगी कि रेफरेंस आपका कि उसमें देखेंगे तो आपको डिफरेंट टेम्परेचर्स के अंदर टाइमिंग क्या है लेकिन हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड पे दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट सेवन मिनट्स एज फार एज आई रिमेंबर कि सेवन मिनट्स बॉइलिंग है इसीलिए हम कहते हैं कि जब दूध जो है वो जोश उबल रहा हो जोश आ रहा हो तो उसको दो तीन बॉयल्स जो है वो कम से कम देने चाहिए हमारे यहाँ यूजली भी प्रैक्टिस लाइक दैट कि एक दफा बॉयल आया और उसे बंद कर दिया सेकेंड टाइम इन्फेक्शन जो है वो ज्यादा सीरियस डेंगी का इसलिए होता है कि बॉडी के अंदर जो है वो एक रिएक्शन आ जाता है ठीक है ना यही सेम जो है वो साइटोकाइन स्टॉम जिसे कहते हैं कि एंटीबॉडी एंटीजन एंटीबॉडी रिएक्शन बॉडी जो है वो ज्यादा इंटेंसिवली एग्रेसिवली रिस्पॉन्स करती है टू दैट एंटीजन बिकॉज द बॉडी बॉडी हैज द मेमोरी ऑफ सेम टाइप ऑफ एंटीजन एंटीजन बिफोर ये डी एन वन तो नहीं था डी एन टू था पहले वन से हुआ था बाद में टू हुआ लेकिन सिमिलैरिटी है तो बॉडी का रिएक्शन जो होता है वो कॉज करता है अभी आपने जो है इन द कोविड जो है जैसे जैसे कोविड के पेशेंट्स को डील करते गए तो पहले तो सिर्फ डील कर रहे थे नमोनिया को कि जनाब लंग जा रहा है उसके बाद ये पता चला कि जनाब लंग के अंदर जो है वो तो कंसोलिडेशन और ओपैसिटीज आ रही हैं ऑक्सीजन सेचुरेशन इज गोइंग टू फॉल बट देर आर अदर पैथोफिजोलॉजीज विच आर एट द सेम टाइम and uh, the pathophysiology of intravascular coagulation and uh, coagulation in different parts uh, different visceras in the kidneys and the heart and the uh, blood and then other uh, pathologies like the cytokine storm ek hi virus jo hai ek hi age group mein ek ke liye bahut lethal ho raha hai dusre ke liye lethal nahi ho raha hai this is because of the internal response of the body to that virus so ye cytokine storms hai uh, jinki wajah se jo hai ye second attack ke andar zyada सीरियस और ज्यादा सीवियर पेशेंट जो है वो हमें नजर आते हैं ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच टू ऑल ऑफ यू इफ यू आर हैविंग एन क्वेश्चन यू मे नोट दैट डन दम डाउन आफ्टर लुकिंग दिस प्रेजेंटेशन एंड वी मे एड्रेस दोस्ट क्वेश्चन इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर एज वेल इन थैंक यू ओके भैया थैंक यू वेरी मच